I kept telling the straight thing we should probably stop um, donating to the new conservatives, but um, you know, they, they they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, not really. Um, oh, hello there, audience. I didn't see you there. How are you? I'm Sam. Welcome to the Stray Thoughts show. Stray Theatre show all about the Auckland art scene. I am joined today by, well, how about you guys introduce yourselves? Hello, I'm Katie Harris. I am the writer and director of Is This All That You Had In Mind? Uh, my name is Alex Farley, and I play Levi. My name is Elamie Paulson. I play Elise. And <laughs> so you guys are on a show. You're not just here just to just to hang out for bands, are you? Oh, we can be. Oh, like I, 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 I just I set up a, a table and a microphone in a random room each week, <laughs> and I just people come to me. But no, you guys actually are here for a reason. Yeah, indeed mm. we are. So what's the what's the show? What, as uh, as if I don't I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> the show is called "Is This All That You Had in Mind?" It's a bit of an absurdist piece of theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what do you want to know about it? I can tell you all. <laughs> Break it all down. <laughs> so this is um this is Stray Theatre's original. Uh, show for yes. the semester, right? Yes. Um, well, let's start with a, a, a pre softball. Um, you said it's an absurdist show. What what is an absurdist show? What makes what makes something absurdist? Um, so there's lots of different kinds of absurdist theatre. Um, it's just kind of one of those uh, pieces that you kind of watch and go, oh, what is going on? Mm. Uh, mm. Made very aware of your presence as an audience member. Um, but like I say, there's lots of different kinds. I draw from, I guess, uh, Brechtian technique a lot of the time. So Bertolt Brecht, he was a, um, I'm butchering that pronunciation, but he was a a German playwright in the 40s who kind of pioneered epic theatre, which is all about audience alienation and making the audience very aware of what they're watching and uh, very conscious of it. Um, So, yeah, that is what this play draws on a lot of the time. I also do a little bit of Beckett, like Waiting for Godot. um, And, yeah, Playwrights like that, pretty much. It's very, very uh, weird theatre, I would say. Condense it. So, in, in, <laughs> a, in a word, it's a weird play. It yeah. is a weird play, indeed. And is there something that attracted you to the idea? Because you wrote the show. Is there something that attracted you to the idea of an absurdist story? Yeah, I mean, I I love a bit of realism. I, there's nothing wrong with a bit of realism. But um, absurdism is always... It was always so much more interesting to me to watch mm. and to be a part of, to play in as well. Um, so, yeah, I, ever since I learned about it in, like, high school and then I, I that was where I did Brecht, I kind of carried on through to Beckett and uni and a few other, like, I, again, butchering pronunciation. One of those words that you read, never say out loud, Handke, Handke, Ivan Handke, he did off- offending the audience. I have um, no idea. I know, you, I'm looking you at could, you. <laughs> you, could say, you could say anything and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, um, but I, it was just always the more interesting genre to me of like to watch and be a part of. Um, and it's been really, really fun to write as well. It's a mm. good way to get a message across to an audience, I think, a lot clearer than um, through realism, I always found that at least. Interesting. And we've got two actors here in the show. Are they allowed mm-hmm. to talk or is it all you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you are you allowed, please? <laughs> please, please. I let them out of their cage for today. <laughs> please, please, Miss Writer, director, can we talk in the interview? Go on again. I guess what I'm interested in is what is it like to perform an absurdist play? I... Uh, I I, know, I don't know much about you, Alex, but I know that Ellie, you've got a history in, in doing some stuff on the stage. Mm. I've seen some stuff of yours in Stray. Um, but what is it like compared to other shows you've done? I think with, like, Absurdist Play, you've got so many, like, you can do so many offers that you couldn't usually do elsewhere. Like, you could mm. take this really obscure reference and put it in, and it's kind of like, yeah, that works. Like, it, it just goes with the show, and so I'm like also themes outside of normal theatre like it's just all it's a good way to just create a different kind of theatre and an experience I don't know Ooh, that's good. my English is not working <laughs> with me today no, I, I, I like the director's like yeah good yeah you look so sure you I've written the theatre you, you will get an extra line tonight <laughs> yeah, yeah I forgot my lines <laughs> yeah. and um, uh, what about you Alex what do you reckon um 
I haven't done, this is probably my first absurdist piece that I've done, but I find, because mm. I, I work quite well with comedy. I think that's one of my favourite genres in terms yeah. of acting. And as a blonde, blue-eyed, white woman, uh, I don't often get roles outside of, oh, she's a bitch. So <laughs> it's quite fun. I, as, 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 as a Jew sitting across it, I was like, oh shit, where is this where going? Where is this on? going? <laughs> where is she taking this? No, yeah. um... It's quite fun because I play a man in mm. the play, which is something that in a lot of theatre plays where you're very much typecast to one thing, I feel like through absurdist you can sort of break those bounds, mm. which I really find scary. Yeah. Uh, what I kind of like is that, um, so I, 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 we won't turn this too much into an academia podcast, but um, absurdism and nihilism often get kind of confused. And I think you sort of brought on that a bit with um, what you were saying. Katie, then we also got the conversation about how it's similar to comedy. Mm. So I guess I wanted to sort of say, what is the overlap and the differences between absurdism and nihilism? And how does it balance tragedy versus comedy? Is it fully one side or the other, or does it kind of skirt the line? Um, I don't want to hog it all that. Um, yeah, I... There's a little bit of nihilism in this play, I'd say. I'm not super well-versed on nihilism, to be honest. I'm you, not... you, you, look, we're not... This isn't a peer review. No, journey, I know, I know. Be, you can say whatever. We're not going to have footnotes. I know, I'm not really academics in the comments. Just <laughs> aggressive. Um, no, I think, uh, for me, absurdism is, like, a way easier way to, like, access comedy and put it in mm. there. And in this particular play... Um, it's my ultimate goal going into it. And I said this at like the read, read through is um, to make the audience uncomfortable to an extent, <laughs> but still keep them entertained. Um, and I think through that, we've used comedy as like a leverage to ensure mm. that the audience stays laughing, but also relatively uncomfortable to an extent the entire time. Right? Is that what yeah. you guys have experienced as well? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an interesting sort of style of comedy of like drawing the meaning, like making it, in a situation where there is little meaning mm. in the scenario, that is, if we think about it, stop to think about it for too long, very depressing, but it's sort of like I, um, I, I think it was Tom Bishop, who's done an episode of on this show, you should totally watch it, uh, <laughs> who once said that, like, he once told me that comedy is just tragedy done at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And I, I think that absurdism is a genre that really kind of taps into that. 100%. Yeah. But we've, we've talked a lot about uh, um, absurdism so far, and I'm, a very interesting topic, but I'm um, little about what the show's actually about. So what, we don't want to spoil it. Uh, if we do, the straight theatre people will um, will not be happy with me, those bloody new conservative-loving straight committee <laughs> members. Um, but what can you tell us about the actual story here? Um, so, it, okay, I'll go on um, So, <laughs> it's a, uh, Elise here is uh, the one who comes up with a plan. Essentially, Levi uh, is a <laughs> this, this guy um, is a character who uh, torments the lives of many a people um, mm. or everyone as it's implied. Yeah, and, yeah, um, it's me. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, so there's a group of four people that essentially work to come up with a plan to try and get rid of him. Mm. using one person who has never been uh, dissatisfied in her life. So Levi's entire goal essentially is to dissatisfy people or like get mm. them away from their satisfaction of their life. Satisfaction's a massive, massive theme in this play. So that's what Levi's entire role is, is just getting rid of it. Um, so Elise here comes up with a, a foolproof plan uh, <laughs> to get rid of him for good. Um, and yeah, hijinks ensue. <laughs> We love we love hijinks. Yeah. It's a very um, fun way to play it. Um, yeah. Anything you guys like to add? Any what about the play? Yeah. In, well, that is why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a barrel full of laughs. Yeah. <laughs> and it's bring your of, children. Not a mess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hide your toddler Hide friendly. Children, Absolutely. Mm. Um, Alex, you sort of touched mm. on this, but I, I, I'll, I'll bring it out a bit further. What is it like um, playing a character that is? Um, as you said, not normally what you might be cast in. <laughs> um, I find it quite cathartic in a way. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, I guess, especially when I was auditioning mm -hmm. and going through with the part, um, as a woman, 
I feel like the the character a lot is based off like a real sleazy man, mm. and so. I found that you can sort of tap into like those first hand experiences. And so it's cathartic in a way that I can be like, ah, uh, like if then, but like also mm. sort of like come to terms with that in my own way and bring that out and I guess find a deeper meaning to it than what I don't know if a guy would actually it's dig to those levels possibly. So true. Like yeah. um Alex was the one who was able to channel like exactly what you're saying, mm. that sleazy 21st century guy who <laughs> Le- Levi is. And it was because you've had those experiences yeah. with those guys. It was, it's incredible. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yo, babe, you don't understand it. It's, it's an NFT on the blockchain. Oh, yeah. like, it's going, cool. I know this may be going over your head, but like, it's so cool. Um, well, yeah. Is, is, <laughs> is catharsis something that's uh, easy to do when you are in a show that is all about absurdism and kind of leaving the audience dissatisfied in a way? Hmm. Or uncomfortable, maybe I should say. I think so, because it's sort of, I guess it's me going, here's my experience. I know this is going to make you feel uncomfortable, but this is Mm. like how I've perceived experiences in my life. So it's Mm. cathartic in that way that I'm like, here's a representation of like the worst like guy that I could ever imagine. But also it's going to make you very uncomfortable and think, Mm. oh my God, is this actually like the way that women perceive things that have happened to them, if that makes sense. Hmm. So I think it goes hand in hand. Like, it's a hard one to pin down for sure. But, and, yeah. and what is that sort of, like, uh, writing case, if you want to make sure that you're still keeping that kind of, oh, life is meaningless, absurdism, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff, but also making sure that there is individual significance of characters for audience members? Yeah, it's it was quite difficult for me. I spent mm. a long time writing this play. and um, How long? It, oh, probably, like... Mm, like close to nine months I think but it wasn't over like it wasn't me just like slaving over it for nine months right? <laughs> it was like going back and forth to it because it all every single character reflects a little bit of me which is probably very concerning when you watch the play and <laughs> 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 um, it's it's um yeah they all have individual parts of like what they all have individual meanings like for example, if we touch on it, uh, Harriet, the character, she re- she reflects the audience, so she acts as the chorus throughout mm. the play. So um, everything that sh- happens to her on stage and that she experiences completely reflects how the audience is feeling or like thinking, I guess. So I, I kind of touched on individual thoughts or individual ideas for every single character to ensure that they the audience could connect to them and still know, you know, this kind of character or recognize it and understand what's going on. But there's still that level of absurdism and that comedy that in, that's injected through it to keep it entertaining to watch. I think, yeah, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, was it um? When did you start writing it? Was it like nine months? Are we talking like nine months ago, or in total you spent about nine months? I, I spent like nine months working on it. But it, yeah, it's my first like long form piece that I've written. So it was mm-hmm. kind of like I say, very sporadic here and there, like ideas written down in my notes and then being like, oh, I'll expand on that uh, sort of thing. Um, so that's why it ends up being, like, obviously not to spoil much, but the actual play itself doesn't, uh, isn't super cohesive in all of its scenes. Like, there, it jumps a lot back and forth to kind of mm. random, unknown spaces or scenarios and then jumps back into, I guess, what you would call real life. But it's all still connected, yeah. Mm. Without asking you to shit on your director, is that difficult uh, to play as an actor, that kind of show? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so. Sorry, it's just me stirring. The <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, like it's. I mean, look. Katie's been a fantastic yeah. director. She, 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 she has my family. <laughs> and um, she's been really. Katie's no, been a fantastic director. Like she, she's very strong with her vision and like what she wants mm. to get out of people and how you know what's correct because obviously it's a lot of offers that we give to try push it to its like boundaries really but um yeah she's supportive and super supportive it's great it's lovely. <laughs> you, were, you were talking earlier about how um you think absurdism as a genre is really handy because it lets the actor make a lot of offers that can be accepted mm-hmm. are there sort of any examples that stand out to you in this whole process i'm, I'm telling you as a yes uh, are there any examples that stand out in this process i mean i don't want to spoil it i don't spoil it but you saw it today like you, you, snapshot you, you of it snippet of one that, of the that's been like 
you, okay, if you don't want to give any specific um, examples, at least take us through a bit more about that. Like, what is the thought process behind making these offers? Trial and error? Is it just throwing everything and we'll see what sticks? Is it trying to pick up on an idea that stood out to you as an actor? Mm. What do you think is that process of working with the director? I think it's like a lot of because Katie read the, she wrote the script. <laughs> presumably, presumably, presumably has read the yeah, yeah. just some information, but um, <laughs> no. And so it's like kind of reading more into it and like having a kind of archetype of these characters, like an old lady. I can say, yeah, you can say, I can say, lady, say this. Like, <laughs> she's an old lady. Yeah. Um, and then like you've kind of got this like the wild card and like you know all this kind of other stuff. Um, and then it's reading in between the lines of what's already written and then seeing how can we, like, make moments with just what's there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's a lot of fun of just, like, this might work. Katie, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, well, maybe not. Yeah. Stop <laughs> I'm, immediately. Yeah, I'm never like, no. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. Yeah. next That's time around. a really good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, you, um, do you ever find that one of these guys will, like, bring out a reading in the text that you never intended? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent, for sure. I think um, it happens oh, quite a lot with um, Emily, oh, our, our Emily, who's Ophelia. She mm-hmm. has read into the script like crazy and brought out ideas that I never even kind of thought of. And then I'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I, I meant to do that. <laughs> I, I intentionally did that. Um, but it's been great. And I think you two have both done the exact same thing. I, I mean, particularly having Levi as a woman has made like a lot of like added so many more layers to like mm-hmm. what's going on. Not that Levi is a woman in the play, but it mm-hmm. helps you. It, you've brought more ideas to it. That's like, like what we're talking about before of like the yeah, personal experiences. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but yeah, no, a hundred percent. I, I like I've had such a brilliant cast helping me out along this way. Like I mm-hmm. couldn't have asked for any better. Like genuinely, yeah. even though it's, like <laughs> it's sort of like um, <laughs> it <laughs> shucks. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's sort of like, um, I always hated it when people made fun of, like, um, English teachers back in high school. Like, oh, they always read into stuff where it's not intended. Like, oh, the curtains are blue, symbolize depression. No, it's just because they're blue. I'm always like, yeah, but the author's intent doesn't always, isn't always the end of it. Yeah. It's like, it, it's kind of how other people react to it. And I think theatre is a great medium for that because, like, kind of literally, it is always going to be that the product is shaped by the interaction of the author's intent with other people and of course you throw the audience in there it's a whole other like mm. can of worms it, it's it's well to come back there's something kind of cathartic about it you get more immediate <laughs> um sign of what the show is going to be about yeah um and it belongs less to one person yeah i, I, think, was, I was always very clear from day one that my script is very um I don't remember the word I used, but it was moving and changing. And, like, if we wanted to change something, if we wanted to take something out, it was fine by me. If we wanted to, like, add something in there, add new layers or whatever, I, it was just as much, like, my project as it was their project as well, you know. Like, it was that was always super important to me. And I think coming out the other end, there's so much stuff that I would have never thought of on my own if I had completely, like, dictatorship to this entire, this entire thing, with <laughs> this entire, um, <laughs> um, but, like, it's, it's, it's been a democracy. <laughs> and I, I think with the material that we've used as well, like, there's a lot of, like, it's, it's a funny show, but it's also, there's a lot of deep moments in there, mm. and I think Katie's been great in giving us space to sort of think about the moments that are deeper and, like, come to terms with acting those ourselves because there's a lot of, like, dark themes in the play. Yeah. Um, and I think she's facilitated that open, like, space to speak about them and, like, come to terms with what we're actually acting instead of just being like, this is what you have to do. It's in your contract. Yeah. I don't care about mm. your trauma. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... No, 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 that, that, that's the stray committee you're thinking about. Oh, yeah, sorry, the new conservatives. I forget. Oh, God, bloody, bloody q oh, <laughs> Disgusting. Um, uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to discuss, just while I have you guys here, is we talked, um, before we started... Um, rolling this episode about uh, the use of music mm. in the show. And I thought that was really interesting. I wondered if any of you guys wanted to maybe um, talk about that, specifically the way you guys use music in the process of making it. Yeah. So each cast member has their own playlist that they've been given. Um, mm. I have a master playlist for the entire play, but as I was writing it, I, every song I listened to would like influence it in a certain way. So 
each character has their own favorite songs and they get to listen to that in the process of learning everything and um I don't know what did you guys think about that I, it was just kind of an offer I put out there to think that'd be cool if I was an actor I'd, do, I'd love that <laughs> I think music informs my process already yeah. in a way and so I found that like even going into the audition that's something that I'd already done so mm -hmm. I think that I think that we gelled really well in that way of percent that works for me too yeah, yeah. I think music's a good reflection of the character and how they feel and how they process mm. emotions mm. and all that kind of stuff. So I think it was actually quite cool having a playlist to kind of refer to and like this is the kind of energy that you want mm. and like yeah. how to deliver your lines and create a character and yeah. Yeah, it's, music's super, super important to me and yeah. it's featured throughout the play as well, very crucial. The t title of the play, I don't yeah. know if you were going to get to that, but yeah, the title of the play comes from a song, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> it's all very connected. <laughs> we love we love the little interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. Um I guess like final question I'll say, because we should probably think about wrapping up soon, is I'm interested in what each of you wants the audience to take away from the show. Uh, it's it's an odd genre in that regard. Like you said, it's all about making the audience aware of themselves in a way that theatre normally deliberately avoids. Mm -hmm. So what what do you want the audience to think going out of the, the theatre? I, <laughs> I love yeah. me again. Um, <laughs> my ultimate like point for the play is that um, the grass is not greener and uh, you can't really, uh, you can't get everything out of life that you want to get by like constantly chasing satisfaction. And I think that, that's quite a like non-absurdist point to get out of an absurdist play. Mm. Like it's a very real thing, but um, mm. absurdism is just absurdism is just like the vehicle in which I've tried to get that across. But that would be my main point, at least. Yeah. So you want to give them a depression? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Or just find a way to not be searching for satisfaction all the time. That's my issue, at least. <laughs> Mad respect, yeah. Alex. I'd say accountability mm. for one's own mindset and the choices they make in life is probably what I've taken the most from the show as well. To not be hide behind your own, uh, or the world that's around you, and take accountability. That's a way less depressing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say that hasn't been said? <laughs> what, what can you say that hasn't been said? Definitely this next bit hasn't been said. <laughs> Tables in color. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um... Yeah, like with the director and, and slash the writer uh, putting, you know, yourself into all these characters is that ultimately you want the audience to find themselves within those characters and be like, oh, I've been down that kind of road before mm -hmm. or like, oh, I can see that. And it's like, it's seeing yourself on stage through these characters and you're just, you come away from it feeling a bit more seen in a sense. Yeah. And it's kind of that like, kind of shared empathy maybe sympathy mm. of just like those are uh, i don't know like that's that's yeah that's life and i suppose mm. i won't do that yeah <laughs> um but i don't know yeah. well you have done that and now you're like oh reflect yeah, on it yeah, yeah reflection, it's of, reflection yeah that was something i've written in my vision but totally Never. seeing yourself reflected on the stage so mm. important <laughs> Well, I, I'm very excited. It sounds really interesting. Do you want to remind our wonderful audience, what's the show? Where's it playing? When's it playing? Where can they get tickets? The show is, is this all that you had in mind? Sorry for the long title. It just keeps going. <laughs> it is on the 28th of September to the 1st of October with a matinee on that Saturday. And it is running at Pitt Street Theatre in a church, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Well, um, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you guys on. Thank you very much, Sam. It's been a dream. Oh, and now, <laughs> right, right in front of the mic, love it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now uh, we'll we'll wrap up there. Thank you very much for watching, audience. Um, at this point, I think we can whack the table. Is you can cut out the audio now. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>